right, here we go. I'm going to paint the house today, or at least some of it. And I went with the bear marquee. I think it's the highest end at the at the depot you can get. I actually kind of wanted to go with semi-gloss, but that's unusual for like the base color. Um, they suggested satin. Um, I just, cause I'm kind of going with a darker, darker-ish color for the house main color so I kind of wanted it to be shiny but oh well they talked me out of it plus I guess the color I've picked uh only came in satin if they didn't have it for the uh, semi-gloss it would have totally made it a different shade so oh well it is what it is and in the end it probably won't be a cup of tea for everybody I was mixing this upside down on the dirt so the the color code is uh messed up but I went with greener pastures so we'll see we'll see how it turns out um, definitely a northwest color but anyway we'll get going on that wish me luck oh it's green yeah i'm sure this isn't uh, everybody's cup of tea uh, green shades especially darker ones i was thinking more of a like a grayish green but we just get such gray winters here uh, I thought I'd just make it a little more green than a gray so that's what we went with and uh, yes yeah, I think I'll probably go with the white trim I was thinking brown at first but then I looked at my door and it's brown so it kind of made it look like a Christmas tree so we'll go with white but anyway there we are we started and that is one pan full of paint. So that would have taken a gallon of primer. So I think I will be okay with a five gallon. I think it's just under five gallons, the buckets these that they give you here, the large ones. So I think I should be able to do one thick coat for sure. Maybe one thick coat and then I might spray on a light coat for a second if I have enough left over. But we'll keep going. And back at it. And yep, yeah, it does look really green. And then you can see that one second I'm wearing a respirator and one second I'm not. But I'm just kind of one of those chemically sensitive folks. Um, and if the wind was kind of, or you know, the air kind of felt like it was circulating around, it wasn't so bad. But every once in a while it, it would get really stagnant and it would get pretty stinky over there. So um, put the respirator on every once in a while. So you'll see it coming on and coming off here. Penny don't care. She'll just deal with anything. She's, she's an old dog. She does what she wants. But yeah, this stuff was going on a lot faster than the, uh, the primer for sure. So glad I did what I did with the primer. I do wish I got one of those extended pole uh, roller uh, handles there. You know, I thought, oh, a six footer is good enough. But when I get down to this end of the house here, I should have spent the 10 extra dollars and got the telescoping one that goes out to you know 10 feet or so because uh, then I have to come around later here and uh, use a ladder but you know it's all good and I, I've debated putting uh, using a sprayer on this because uh, I do have one just a little Harbor Freight one but I was to uh, what I read was that you know especially with the primer you don't want it either like if you spray it it'll just go on and kind of sit on the surface because there's no like pressure with it as with the roller so definitely with your primer and then with your first coat of main color you definitely want to do a roll on and or some people will do a spray on and do a back roll where you spray it on and then come back with the roller and kind of push it in so yeah we just went with the roller for the first round and um, I think in come spring or next summer um, I will do a a light coat with the spray gun I do have to uh, paint all my battens that I will be putting over this um, so we'll see how much paint I have left over so probably wouldn't have enough paint to do a roll layer but definitely probably enough to do at least a decent uh, you know spray layer but we'll come to that when it's that time uh, next season winter's hibernation time and uh, you can see a little going over there a darker green that i thought about going with but my neighbor's like hey hunter greens that's so 90s don't do it so ah we didn't but anyway so i won't put you through all of it so here's some a few pictures of it done for the first layer and then uh, we'll go over some other things that i've been 
going over. Part of it is the uh, what I did with the tractor, which you saw before, but here we go. Well, here this is, finally. It's the pond liner. It's actually a roof cap for my place. But somehow we gotta get this unpackaged and up there. And it's only about 400 pounds. So someday I'll figure out how to make that happen. Well, this is interesting. I ordered a 15 by 90. It says 15 by 100. I don't know if they cut 10 feet off it or not, but my house is 66 long and we have the eave. So I just figured 70 feet for the front end. And then we just are just shy of that. And we need just plus of 20 feet. So that's why I got 90. So like 68 on this one and then 22 on that equals 90. We'll have a bunch of cutoff coming off the end. But if we have another 10 feet, that would be great because I do want to make a pond anyway. So I could make a little one with the 10 feet extra and then the, the extra that'll be cut off the end of that because that side will be 15 feet wide and we only need about maybe seven, maybe eight feet of that. So we'll have a little chunk left over to maybe make a pond. That'd be nice. But we'll find out if this is really 100 feet when we get it unrolled up there. And the present is unwrapped. And that's what your pond liner house cap looks like when it comes shipped to you. So I'm assuming it's doubled up, or at least what needs to be 15 feet wide. So I'd say that's about five. Yep, so it's tripled up is my guess. Somehow we're gonna get it up on the roof. What I'm gonna do is probably put a couple metal bars through here you know turn it sideways so it faces you know the house there put it on build some little stilts just enough to get this off the ground on on a couple bars so i can roll it and just go up there and pull it uh, like a carpet so hopefully that'll be the way i can get it, get it up there so we'll get to work on that at some point there used to be a stump in there now it might be a koi pond. We'll see. We'll see if this feels like a good place to put it or not. I'd actually like it over a little bit, but we got that big stump in there. And out of there, over there. I don't know if you can tell how big this is or not from video, but it's pretty big. All right, we're over here by this big pile, by the shed, and when 811 came, they didn't tell me about a line of water or water pipe that came over here. Um, I didn't know it was here. I just thought the one, you know, my water main is over there. And then I just had the one pipe that goes to the house. But it is a double lot, so I guess it makes sense that they would actually put one here. But nobody knew it was here until I was using the excavator and was pushing a pile with a blade into there and knocked the cap off of this pipe. and water went a flowing and i did see this pipe on the on the dirt here but i thought it was just an old irrigation part uh that was just because there was a bunch of trash that i was digging up over here so i just thought it was a piece and i almost got off to pick it up but then i would have realized not to scrape it but anyway it's an easy fix just cap it off here and i'm going to put a spigot on here but it's nice to know that i actually have water access over here should i you know put a garage over here or sheds or whatever so anyway we'll fix this and these are the parts i got teflon tape a little plastic doohickey this goes shoves in the end here and then i could screw in a faucet i was going to get a brass one of these but i'm actually just this is going to be temporary uh, i want one that is an elbow and then so i can bury this in the ground at some point and then have an elbow and this coming up and it will be actually opposite thread because then you get the the steel piece that goes up about a foot so then you can you know anchor the faucet coming out of the out of the ground but for now we're just going to cap it off so we have water pressure again all right got her in there pressure's on don't see any leaking and we have blast off Oop, trying to get not get wet All right, looking good. 
All right, y'all, this is uh, the damage after three days of excavator work. I'll give you a little tour here. I started up, well, I didn't start here, but we'll start up here. Uh, there was like a rotten stump in this section, and I just kind of dug it out from the top, you know, busted it up. It was pretty rotten, obviously. I didn't want to dig too deep because this power and telephone and whatnot is here. Just kind of tilt this up a little bit uh, just to, you know, so I'll get rid of the debris at some point. I will be replacing the fence, just not this season. Thought about ripping that out, but I'll just trim it down. And then I didn't really get to this section either. I did take a few of the ferns out, but I wanted to clear it out a little bit more, but we didn't, especially because this big stack of lumber is there. It's kind of a bummer. I wanted to level this out as well. But we leveled out the, uh, the driveway here, and I'm gonna put a couple sheds here, or maybe an official garage at some point. And then we cleared out this section, and I didn't, yeah, I think I talked about this, and there's that water pipe. Made a big debris pile here. Worked back in this section. I wanted to move this rock to my property line, which is basically where this maple tree is coming through. Uh, but yeah, that failed. I think I'm showing that. Cleared this out a little bit back here. There's still some garbage, but I'll throw that away at some point. And then cleared it out back in here. Moved the uh, lumber, scrap lumber over there just to kind of get it out of the way. And we'll slowly whittle that down over the years because I wasn't sure if this was the septic field or not all the way up in here because there is an observation tube right there. So he said when he built the shed it wasn't on the drain field so maybe it stops here, I don't know. Um, but nice to have it off anyway. I will be continuing to move this stuff off. And then we worked our way back here. Ow. And still have all these stumps and if I rent the excavator again I will get that out of there but there is the fence right there so that's my prop well that delineates my property line coming down through here so I did throw a bunch of debris over here um, I don't think anybody's gonna do anything with this lot anytime soon and I'll you know I'll break it down at some point the logs are gonna come out and then brought the excavator up through here Made another debris pile over here. Went back around there with the excavator as well. And this is where my drain field ends here, or starts. Septic tanks are over there. Came and got a big stump out of here. It was right there. And then another stump right there. Big one. Sitting down yonder way. I wanted to get back here with the excavator too. But again, just kind of ran out of time. Made another debris pile here. Should have uh, consolidated it all here, but I didn't want to disturb the roots too much for these trees. That, are, that was my thinking. Got to get this scrap metal out of here at some point. Took a few stumps out of there, rotten ones. And now we have like a little track coming around here. Someday we'll work on this fence. And another debris pile. There was a bunch of stumps here. Which now they're all piled up over there. And that's probably my biggest debris pile. Didn't get the tractor up in there, wanted to, but again, if I ever rent it again, we'll do that. And someone just came and took a ton of logs out of here. So didn't get up in there either. There's like a disintegrating couch still up there. It's just a frame. Gotta get that out of there someday. Only kept these here, just kind of a shade from the neighbors a little bit. And yeah, so we're back to the front here. Leveled this out. I want to put a shed here, and then here, another shed as guest houses. And I want to put a little pond in here. I had that big hole here, but it was a little too farther over, so we filled it in. Easy to dig through this soil with the tractor, so. We'll do that the next time. Anyway, there's a little around the property tour of what we did in three days of tractor work. And next we'll do some painting.